tuberculosis bacteria grow slowly, so laboratory methods based on growing TB bacteria can take weeks or months to obtain patient medical results. Therefore, a molecular method is needed to accurately stratify patients into groups to quickly determine what treatment is working effectively against TB. One such method is the Tuberculosis Molecular Bacteria Load Assay, or TBMBLA. This video will explain two different methods of RNA extraction. Firstly, the phenol chloroform RNA extraction method is described. Conduct this method in a biosafety cabinet. Add 100 microliters of extraction or internal control into each sample. This is provided in the Vital Bacteria MBLA kit. Its purpose is to control for RNA extraction and downstream PCR inhibition. In the fume hood, transfer the tubes into a centrifuge bucket and close the lids. Next, transfer the buckets to a centrifuge to spin at 3000 G for 30 minutes at room temperature for large tubes or 20,000 G for 10 minutes at room temperature for microtubes. Discard the supernatant into a 15 ml tube and store at minus 80 degrees Celsius or discard into a chemical waste. Ensure the cell pellet is undisturbed. If the pellet is detached, centrifuge the sample again and discard the supernatant. Next, pipette 950 microliters of lysing buffer into each sample. Suspend the pellet in each sample with a P1000 tip. Transfer the sample into a lysing matrix tube. Once the tubes are closed tightly, place the tube in a homogenizer to spin at 6000 RPM for 40 seconds at room temperature. After homogenization, centrifuge the samples at 12,000 G, 5 minutes within room temperature. Leave the tube to stand for 5 minutes after centrifugation. While the tubes are left to stand, add 300 microliters of chloroform into an RNA's free 1.5 milliliter screw cap tube. Then transfer the whole liquid part of the homogenized sample into the chloroform containing screw cap tube. Be careful not to transfer any sample debris or lysing matrix. Vortex the tube for 10 seconds and incubate at room temperature for 5 minutes. Then centrifuge at 12,000 G, 5 minutes within room temperature. Carefully transfer only the upper aqueous phase containing RNA to a 1.5 ml microcentrifuge tube using 200 microliter pipette tip. Add 500 microliters of 100% ice cold ethanol. Mix the aqueous phase and ethanol thoroughly by inverting the tubes 5 times. If the sample is processed on the same day, transfer to minus 80 degrees C for 15 minutes. If the sample is processed on subsequent days, freeze it at minus 20 degrees C. Centrifuge the sample at 13,000 G, 20 minutes and 4 degrees C. Discard the supernatant. Add 500 microliters of 70% ice cold ethanol. Centrifuge the sample at 13,000 G, 10 minutes and 4 degrees C. Dry the RNA in a heat block at 50 degrees C for 20 to 30 minutes. Dissolve the RNA in 100 microliters RNA's free water at room temperature for 5 minutes. Vortex the sample for 5 seconds to resuspend the RNA. Either store the RNA at minus 80 degrees C or treat the sample with DNAs to remove residual genomic DNA. Next, we demonstrate the column-based RNA extraction. Add 100 microliters of extraction or internal control into each sample. This is provided in the Vital Bacteria MBLA kit. Mix the sample by inverting the tube twice. Centrifuge the tube at 3000 G for 30 minutes at room temperature for large tubes or 20,000 G for 10 minutes at room temperature for microtubes. Discard the supernatant and suspend the sediment in 950 microliters of RLT buffer. Transfer the sample to a lysing matrix tube and place in a homogenizer to spin at 6000 RPM for 40 seconds at room temperature. Centrifuge the tubes at 12,000 G, 5 minutes within room temperature. Pipette the supernatant from the tube to a 2 ml RNAs free tube. Add one volume of 70% ethanol to the lysate, which is the amount equal to the volume of the sample. Mix the sample well by pipetting. Transfer 700 microliters, including any precipitate that is formed, to an RNAsy spin column placed in a 2 ml collection tube. Do not discard the rest of the sample. Centrifuge the tube for 15 seconds, 8000 G, at room temperature. Discard the flow through. If the sample is more than 700 microliters, transfer successive aliquots of 700 microliters into the same RNAsy spin column. Repeat the centrifugation steps and discard the flow through until all of the sample is processed. 
Add 350 microliters of buffer RW1 to the RNAZ spin column. Close the lid and centrifuge at 8000 G, 15 seconds within room temperature to wash the spin column membrane. Discard the flow through. Add 80 microliters of DNA's iBuffer RDD mix to the RNAZ spin column. The mix is made by adding 10 microliters DNA's iStock solution to 70 microliters buffer RDD for each sample. Incubate the sample at room temperature for 15 minutes. Add 350 microliters of buffer RW1 to the RNAZ spin column. Close the lid and centrifuge at 8000 G, 15 seconds within room temperature. Discard the flow through. Add 500 microliters of buffer RPE to the RNAZ spin column. Close the lid and centrifuge at 8000 G, 15 seconds within room temperature. Discard the flow through. Add 500 microliters of buffer RPE to the RNAZ spin column. Close the lid and centrifuge at 8000 G, 2 minutes, within room temperature. This longer centrifugation ensures there is no carryover of ethanol. After centrifugation, remove the RNAZ spin column carefully from the collection tube to avoid the column from being in contact with the flow-through. Discard the collection tube with the flow-through. Place the RNAZ spin column in a new 2 ml collection tube. Centrifuge at full speed, room temperature, for one minute. Place the RNAZ spin column in a new 1.5 ml collection tube. Add 100 microliters RNAs free water directly to the spin column membrane. Close the lid and centrifuge at 8000 G, one minute within room temperature to elute the RNA. Once RNA has been extracted using the methods described, the samples can be prepared for a PCR run. All samples are diluted at a 1 to 10 ratio using RNA's free water. Next, prepare MTB and IC standards RNA extract by diluting them seven tenfold dilutions. This creates the standard curve for the PCR run. Next, prepare RT plus and RT minus PCR master mixes according to the manuscript directions. Each sample and control are run in duplicate in RT minus qPCR, that is two tubes containing RT plus master mixes and a single reaction of RT minus master mix. Add 16 microliters of master mixes in each tube and 4 microliters of sample or control into each PCR tube. Run the samples. To determine if a treatment is working for patients, use the standard curve to convert CQ values into bacterial load. Calculate the response as the change in bacterial load over the treatment follow-up period. A decrease in bacterial load over treatment period signifies a positive response towards the treatment. TBMBLA is a simple and quick method to accurately quantify patient tuberculosis burden. By following the steps outlined in this video, patient treatment progress can be monitored quickly and the rate of disease can be minimised globally.